what has got you thinking about polling? I mean, is it because with Biden dropping out, you're trying to get a sense of like, what does the race look like now? Or why is polling on your mind? I mean, it's on my mind because it's on my feed. Uh, and, and it's because it's, everyone wants to know, like, what are the odds for X, Y, and Z right now? Uh, it's, it's been something I've tried to pay more attention to since Trump's win in 2016, because everyone said he didn't have a chance to win. Um, and it's, it's reinforced some of the political realities that are, you have your, your beliefs. I have my beliefs. My parents have their beliefs. Everyone I grew up with have the, has their beliefs and like five states decide who's president. You know, there may be more people in California than those five states combined, but those five states elections decide. So polling data from Arizona, uh, Nevada, uh, pretty much the Rust Belt, but it feels like it's just just Pennsylvania now. Oh, Michigan's got to try. Are, the are these the five states you're naming them off? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's literally like Arizona, Nevada, um, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. That's six, I believe. Um, yeah. There are states that – and Georgia feels like – Georgia and North Carolina are kind of always there, but they feel like they're part of the Deep South, and so they're not. But Georgia obviously just went blue uh, last year, and – I think that there's a theory that North Carolina's in play. I don't know how much I believe it. Uh, Barack Obama won, a, won North Carolina. I can't remember if it was one or both terms. Um, North Carolina's got a, a fairly healthy influx of young, educated people who tend to who tend to vote blue. And to Charlotte in particular, I think there's a couple other cities in the like Research Triangle that have a big draw. Um, Texas has shifted considerably more blue over the last, well, I feel like it's like all but one election well, in the last five yeah. have gotten closer and closer and closer. And we have pretty unpopular uh, Republican candidates here. So you'd think, like I would tell you, I think Texas is probably closer than Florida, which has historically been kind of a flip. But I mean, if Texas went blue, isn't that kind of it? Because Texas yeah, is that like would, the biggest. Well, I mean, no, it would just be, it would be weird if for Texas to go blue and like Arizona not to. Well, but in my mind, it's, I don't, I could be wrong, but I think Texas has the second most it votes. Does, yeah. I think so it's so 20, that's like the 29, 29 I mean, electoral votes. That's like the biggest swing possible for the red states to lose the most. Blue gains the most. It can gain. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, obviously, yes. obviously you've got, it's like California, Texas, New York, Pennsylvania, I believe. No, Florida, Pennsylvania, maybe. Yeah, Florida's fourth, Pennsylvania's fifth. Pennsylvania makes sense that it's it's populated, uh, but but I don't think people think of it as as a, it's because these, these Midwestern Rust Belt states have very populated cities in them. But they are rural and and historically more blue collar. Uh, it makes sense that there's a demographic split there. What is fascinating is, you know, there's a trend over time towards concentration in cities, and I think people forget that Philadelphia is that populated, um, and and then you got Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh, there's probably yeah. another, yeah. So, like, if they've got an NFL team, a bunch of people live there, except Green Bay. Like, what? A, whatever with those guys. so <laughs> texas is trending the same way it's it's just a question of there are mechanical uh disenfranchise issues that i think occur here maybe more than than other places but but i haven't personally had trouble voting so i'm trying to think about it i think there's and this goes to kind of the second point which is, is true for both polling and and kind of just elections in general is that if, if there's a premise that is believed by everyone that like this will not go this way, it does not matter. Then, you know, people who are underdogs, so to speak, are less likely to, to vote. So it tends to come down to those five or six States for a couple of reasons, but, but it's also worth noting that because they're historically swing States, they, they tend to get a lot of turnout. So you've got, it makes sense. Yeah. Cause you feel like your vote matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> if you think if you think that everybody in Texas hates Ted Cruz and they're not voting because that's not true, you're wrong. They're not voting because they're like, well, it's never going to change. He's like he's like the least popular senator in the last 20 years and and uh, just keeps winning. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know though. It's and and this goes to another thing is this like narrative events that take place that are outside of of directly affecting presidents. Like I think that those things start to play a bigger and bigger part. Like Texas has Texas has uh a pretty rough history in the last couple of years with with um energy infrastructure, which is right indirectly the result of actions taken by our governor prior to him being governor when he was working for ERCOT, which is the, I don't know what it is. It's like the utility infrastructure management company. Let's call it that. That's probably not the right term. Um, And then, you know, Ted Cruz runs off to Mexico when we've got power outages and, and all that stuff has happened twice in the last like three months. Yeah. Like there's been people in Houston without electricity for a week. It's probably, it's probably been two, but I am assuming that most of them have power again now. I don't know, but those things resonate with people when they're when they're formerly not motivated. Now I'm going to show up. 